All right, guys. So I gave it a lot of thoughts. I made a poll last night. You guys want it. You guys wanted it badly. So we are going to do gear videos once again. I know you guys are probably excited or whatever, but we're doing gear videos once again. Now, this time I want to update and try to give you guys as thorough analysis as possible. Not going to get too complex with like gearing and whatnot because there's like damage formulas and RNG chances. I'm not going to go really far into those. I'll give you guys basically my understanding of how I pick out which guns I like and which guns are good for me. And that's pretty much it. I'm not going to go super min maxi when it comes to just analysis. I'm just going to go with what I think and how I determine my guns. And if you guys want to follow along with it, by all means, go for it. So that being said, I made a basically a formula sheet with how I'm going to do these um, gear videos from now on. We're going to do something like this. In today's video, we're going to talk about battleship guns. So I split this up. We're going to be talking about every gun that's gold tier or higher, or if it's a really good gun, and I'll talk about it for purple tier. Then there are a couple guns that are like blue tier that are pretty good, like Gang Guts gun, and then the Ayanami Shimakaze DD guns, those kind of guns. I will get into them, but I won't talk about them a lot. I'll just talk about what they do and why people use them. That's pretty much it. Overall, for the most part, though, I think Gold Gear is more, more than enough to talk about in discussion and in thorough. And then if there are Rainbow Gears, I'll talk about those as well, too. But for the most part, Purple are okay. There's just not that many of them that are like okay, okay. And then the occasional blue tier guns. All right, guys. <clears throat> so that thing, with that being said, let's get into this video. So again, I'll be going down this list and be talking about the ones that are what I believe are pretty good. If I don't go over the gun, either it's too niche to be recognized or I just don't like it because it's just that bad. All right, guys. So let's go down the list. I'll talk about each and every gold gear, though. Even if it's good or bad, I'm still talking about them. So starting off with this one, the quadruple... 356 uh, BL14 inch MK7. This one, the earliest uh, tier 3 gold gun in the game for battleships since the release of this game. So, this gun right here, if you guys don't already know how to look for battleship guns or like what to look for when it comes to these kind of guns or whatever, I follow this formula, all right? So, follow along with me. Firepower, obviously, but the, all tier 3s are basically 45 firepower. Whereas tier 4s are 65 firepower, right? Easy to follow along there. I look at damage. Damage is very, very important. The higher the, num the higher this number is, the better it is. So as of right now, the highest one is like Yamato's gun, which is like 216. This right here is half of that. So you can probably figure out how much damage, damage you're going to do just about judging by this right here, right? But there's more to it than just shell damage. But this gives you an idea. As of right now, average base of a good BB gun is about 150. So... Yeah, you can imagine. The second number right here is how many shells fire per volley. So this tells you right here that this gun fires four shells that does about 800, uh, 108 damage per shell. Not exactly, but it gives you an idea, right? So fire four shells, this much damage is what you can expect. The second thing I look for is the rate of fire, the cooldown reduction of this. So this right here is 29 seconds. It is very, very slow. As slow as the Yamato gun in this game, so you have a lot, you have a lot of shells, but have a slow reload. You can probably imagine how this gun will perform. It's going to shoot very slow, but it's going to shoot out a lot of shells per volley. All right. The third thing I look for is the spread. This spread right here is 22. So if you guys don't know how spread works, it's basically how tight each of the volleys are going to be. The smaller this number is, the better and more accurate the sh uh, the gun is going to be. What I want to aim for is about 18. 18 spread is a very, very good amount for a BB gun on average. Anything above that is very risky because you may miss. Even though there are many ways of uh, lowering spread nowadays, like the rainbow fire control radar or using specific ships that gives bonuses to lower spread. This right here, you don't want to have it to be, be too high. After 18, it starts getting a little bit inaccurate and you want to avoid that. So I look for about 18. So this right here is 22. It is very, very inaccurate. It's slow reload, and it has pretty low sh shelling damage. I'm not going to lie. <clears throat> so the sec uh, th fourth thing, my bad, fourth thing I look for is the coefficient. 
So coefficient right here basically is like a damage modifier when a gun is like plus 10 or whatever. Now there's, there's damage modifiers before plus 10, but right here, this first number on the wiki, it tells you basically what the coefficients are at plus 10. So this is 100%, right? Nowadays, most guns are at 110 at plus 10, so this is like 10% lower. It goes even higher at plus 13. So at plus 13 is 18% damage modifier right here. That's an increase of coefficient. Most guns that are really good goes into like 140, 130%. So, or not 140, like 130%. So this right here is really, really lacking on damage modifiers. And then lastly, I look for the ammo typing, HE, simple, 140 light armor, 110 on the medium armor, and 90 on the heavy armor. So what I can determine from this gun, I'll use this as a sample, is it has low shelling power, it fires a lot, it has very slow reload, it is very inaccurate, it has low coefficients, and has average damage modifiers. What this gun tells me is that it's very slow, it hits really hard on light, but not too hard because it has very um, low uh, shelling power. But it's very inaccurate, slow, does decent damage on, on high explosive. So overall, this gun, I don't like it. It is not that great to me. If I were to rank it, I'd do something like this. Campaign-wise, you could probably get like decent amount from it. So I'll, I'll give it like a B. We'll give this like a B right here. Because even though it's inaccurate, because mobbing content, there's like so much like mobs on the field. You're probably going to hit something even though you're firing four times. Although it is slow. Keep that in mind, it is a slow gun, so it's not like super crazy, so there's that. Bossing, this gun is absolutely horrendous. We'll give it a D because it's inaccurate, it's very slow, it's for, for high explosive well too. So it's for probably good for early game bosses, but not for end game bosses, all right? Farming, again, probably not the best gun here as well either. We'll, put it, we'll give it a D because this gun is very, very slow. For farming, you want fast guns. So, I'm not a big fan of that, so we're going to skip that. And OS, OS, by the time you get into OS, you have like numerous, numerous of better endgame guns compared to this one right here. It's just not a great gun overall, so I'll give it a D. Overall, this is a early game. Uh, this is like a early invention or early creation of this game. This is one of the earliest battleship guns to come out in Azure Lane. By all means, it is not the best by far. So, if you guys have it, I would not upgrade it. But that's up to you guys. You can if you want to. Personally, I wouldn't upgrade it. The only time I would upgrade this is if I'm chasing fleet power because you want the stat bonuses to toss onto your ships. Otherwise, overall, this gun is just not that great. Next on the sh uh, list, we have the... um, I, I guess people call this the JB gun. The John Bart gun. So we're going to first remove this off the Excel sheet. Did I even give a D to this? I, I guess I did. I'm not sure. <laughs> I had a D for the last one, so it didn't really matter too much. Anyway, so this, this is a JB gun right here. 45 firepower, 120 times 4. So much better compared to the previous gun because it does about 12, shell, uh, 12 shelling damage more. Has two uh, 25.8 seconds reload, so much faster. 21 spread, still kind of high, but much better than the last gun. A 100 to 118 coefficient and HE bracketing so this is a much better improvement compared to the previous gun but again this is very this is very very small for a battleship gun it is firing four times though that's the that's the good part but when you're firing four times and you have very very inaccurate spread it's just not worth it overall it is not so overall this gun right here has pretty slow reload not the highest shelling damage terrible spread low coefficients compared to most guns nowadays that are really good and average hg spread on this gun right here so overall this gun right here i think i screwed this up um campaign i'll probably give it like i give it a b i guess same as the other gun because you, you'll probably get some value out of mobbing with it but like not a crazy amount bossing this gun right here is absolutely it's not absolutely bad, but like I want to say it's like the best. I'll give it a C. Farming. There are much better guns out there. We'll give it a D. And OS. Not a fan of this in OS, so we'll give this again. A, uh, we'll probably give it like a C minus. I feel bad. So the reason why this gun is like not good either, because it is an improvement compared to the previous gun, but overall it's just again too slow. Shelling power is pretty low. Terrible spread and average coefficients. 
This is also one of the early game guns as well too. As you can tell, it's, it came from Iris and Light of Dark, which we had like back in 2019. So it is a very, very old gun. So you can tell back then the power creep was very, very low and minuscule. So it's not the best gun because this game has aged quite a while. So again, not a fan of this gun for HE gun. There are way better choices out there compared to this one by far. Let's close that. And let's get rid of this. All right, so let's go down the list a bit more. We have the triple 304 MM SKC 39 prototype, AKA the Odin's gun. So this gun right here, we, there's a uh, large cruiser variant and a battleship variant. We'll be talking about the battleship one for this video. So let's get right into it. 45 power, five power as average, 105 times three. So low on the shelling power and it fires three times. All right. so. Oh no, looking like a bad gun, right? But no, there is more to it than that. Fire rate, 18.2 seconds. That is extremely, extremely fast. It is a very, very fast gun. Very, very fast. 19 spread, a little bit above what I want it to be, but still still pretty good. 19 isn't like that, that bad, but ideally I want to aim for 18, but 19 is not that bad either. Has a coefficient of 100 to 118, and as... All HG ammo, it is the average 140 to 110 to 90 spread. So once again, guys, if you guys don't know for these ammo type spreads, first number is light armor, second number is medium medium armor, and the third number is um, heavy armor. The higher this value is, the better it is against that specific content. All right, guys? The higher number, the better it is. All right? So you want these to be as high as possible. So this gun right here, it may sound bad on paper because I said like low shelling power. It has okay spread average coefficients for like old guns or whatever but the reason why this gun is good is because it's very very fast it's 18.2 seconds what this means is that this is a really really good farming gun just like the hood gun that i'll be talking about later in the video this is a very very fast gun so it's really good for farming early game maps there are a lot of early game maps back in the day that people farmed a lot of like 2 1 7 2 stuff like that so you can still use it for those kind of scenarios because there are times where you want to level up uh, shifts in low-level maps. Um, for me personally, I use 7-2 as a way for me to rush 200 affinity on my shifts when I, whenever I want to do a showcase like Musashi, Vanguard, uh, Kronstadt. I did all those ship 200 affinities in like three or three days using 7-2. So it is a very, very good farming gun. It has a decent campaign run with this. So we'll give this gun a C for campaign because it's pretty fast. We'll give it an A for farming. It is a very, very good farming gun. As for bossing, it is not good. I will give it a D. And OS, though, there is way better guns out there. We'll give this also a D. So, by all means, it's a very niche gun. Uh, you want to use this primarily for farming because when you have content that you can KO in one hit, it doesn't matter how strong a gun is as long as you're KOing it fast. So, if you're going to 7 2 or you're going to 2 1 and you just KO every mob with just one hit, does it really matter how strong the gun is or how fast that gun is? Speed. Speed matters more when you're clearing content very, very fast because you want to get through it as soon as possible to go and farm it again. So speed is very, very important when it comes to farming. AKA this gun is really, really good for farming. I use this gun for pretty much every kind of, uh, every time I'm, I'm pushing a ship to like 125 with 200 affinity, like Musashi or Vanguard. I always use this gun. It's very, very good gun for pushing farming with. So there is that. Right, I'm getting tired of this. I'm, I'm gonna, I gotta find a way to like make this a lot better, but we'll do that. <laughs> I gotta find a way. This is a work in progress, guys. Work in progress. So scrolling down a bit more, we have the triple 381 mm BL 15 inch MK3 prototype, AKA the Monarch gun, the PR1 Monarch gun. So this right here is one of the better HE guns we've gotten in the game. 45 firepower, 142 damage on shelling. That is pretty high right there. Really good. A big bump from the previous guns we talked about for three shells each per volley. 23 seconds per volley, not bad. 18, uh, 19 spread, a little bit on the higher end, but definitely not bad at all either. 105 to 124 percent coefficients, not bad. Once again, 105 is a definitely improve of uh, at plus 10 and at 
six percent increase at plus 13 that is very very good and the he spread again 140 110 and 90 as average so this gun right here is probably one of the better he guns we're getting in the game i think i believe as of right now it's probably like second or third best he gun in the game um, the other ones I'll talk about later on, but I think it's the second or third as of right now. I got checked. I got double checked once I finish this video, but it's by no means a bad gun. Now, here's the thing. I'll compare it with the other gun later on that we're going to talk about. That's very close to this one, but this gun right here is good because this gun can go to plus 13. The other gun I'm talking about is going to go to plus 11, but by plus 13, it wins because of coefficients. That being aside, though, 142, sh uh, 142 shell damage times three is not bad for HE pretty good on the spread right here it's a little bit past the helena range if you want to play with helena gives you variety right there 19 spread a little bit above where i want it to be but still really really good high coefficients and the modifiers are about average so this is not a bad he gun campaign wise we'll, we'll give this gun about um we'll give it like a meh, he he is not that bad we'll give this gun a b I say a B is a really good campaign uh, for, uh, place to put it for this gun. Now for bossing, now early game bossing, this gun is very, very good because a lot of enemies are light armor. However, later on, there aren't as many light armor targets that needs these kind of things. I can think of some scenarios like 14-3 boss is two DDs and you need HE there. There's also hell in the meta that we're already done with, so you don't need it right there. You may have uh, meta or uh, Jinsu meta coming out soon, which is also light armor, so it may be good. It may be good there again and there's also arbiter temperance so those are basically like four fights i can think of as of right now that's going to need hg's uh ammo otherwise every other boss in this game either is heavy or medium armor primarily medium armor so you're not going to need as much he for bossing but you can still use he if you want to it just won't be as effective compared to armor piercing so we'll give this gun a we'll give this gun a b in, in the scenario that it performs for light armor, it's not that bad because there's not many options. So we'll give it a B. Farming wise, we'll give this we'll give this like a, a C plus. Now it's it is a strong gun, don't get me wrong, but it's just on the, like the average speed end, so I'm like not that big of a fan of it. But it's not like a super terrible gun. It's it's still really really good for farming with because it has decent power. It's okay speed and it has high coefficients so it's not like terrible for farming with but it's not like the best there's are there are better options out there for farming guns with an operation siren again the only time you need hg in operation siren is when you're doing like arbiter temperance now if you want for mob clearing there's many many ships out there like vanguards and carriers that can that have preload that can clear mobs way faster so you don't need the he there we'll give this gun pretty much a D plus D plus meaning is pretty much only going to be used in Arbiter Temperance and even then battleships aren't the best for dealing with uh, Arbiters so we'll give it a D plus there so that's how I feel about this gun right here um, it is definitely one of the better HE guns in the game but HE is just a weird isn't such a weird place right now in the game that like AP is just the master race armor um, ammo type in the game it's, it's just too universal because there's so many bosses in this game that are medium armor and AP just shreds uh, medium armor. So, yeah, there you go. Right, here we go again. I need to delete these things. All right, fun, fun, fun. All right, next on the list, we have the Sardegna gun, the Triple 381 MM Model 1934. The Latorio Veneto gun, whatever you want to call it. We have that gun. Right, so 45 firepower, 148 on the damage of shells. Very nice. 24.2 uh, uh, seconds of a reload. 21 spread. That is very, very uh, sketchy right there. Very, very sketchy. Average coefficients of 100 to 118. And the, a uh, the ammo typing is AP. Uh, star i'll call it star I don't, I don't know the proper word for it star 40 135 and 115 so this gun right here for an ap gun it's it's not the worst but it's not the best here's the thing about it the shell typing for this gun there's gonna be better ones i'm gonna talk about later in the video but it's it's about a little bit below average a little bit it's not like 
it's not like far behind it, but it's like not the highest either. The reload is a little bit slow, but it's not like the worst. It's maybe like if it saves like a hunt, one or two seconds more, it'd probably be in a better spot, but it's a little bit off the Helena timing if people want to play with Helena. Otherwise, it's not that big of a deal. But this right here is the kicker, the 21 spread. Like I told you guys, the lower the number is, the better it is. And I aim for about 18. 21 spread is very, very high. It, that means the gun's going to be very inaccurate when you're firing it. And there's a good chance it may miss. So I'm not a fan of the 21 spread. It is very, very high. Coefficients are normal. Ammo typing, I think this is about average or a little bit below average compared to the better guns in the game as of right now. So AP wise, this gun's like all right or whatever, but meh. So in terms of campaign, campaign you primarily want to use HD stuff, and this gun is kind of like whatever um, until like later on the maps. But we'll give this gun like we'll give it a C, I guess C minus. I give it a C minus. Bossing wise, now it's not the worst gun, but there are definitely better guns out there for AP guns. So we'll give this gun a C plus. Farming wise, this gun is it, there is way there is way way better farming guns out there. We give it a D. And Operation Siren again. By the time you get to Operation Siren, you probably have way better options out there compared to this gun. We'll give this gun a C minus. So overall, I'm very very harsh on this gun because AP is a very very competitive uh, gun typing because there's so many guns nowadays that comes out for battleships that are based around AP. So this right here is probably like one of the bottom of the barrel AP guns that we're going to get in the game for, for gold tier. Now, is it usable? Yes. But there are definitely, definitely better options out there. Now, I, I'm aware. Uh, I believe Vanito or Latorio. I think it was Latorio. That gets a special bonus or whatever um, when you're using this gun and she can benefit from it. But the issue is that Latorio... Her, um, I think overheating is um, part of her skill. Let me check right here. But, but basically, v Latorio doesn't do like that much damage, right? Improves the barrage but proc chance by 10%. Like, Latorio doesn't do that much damage to the point where this gun is like super relevant. So, it's not like even if you are to use this on her, it won't be like that like game changing. It won't be. Like, it's just not going to make her like a monster of a ship. Like, Latorio lacks a lot of things for her kit to be, like, actually, like, relevant. I'm just not a big fan of Latorio as a as a gameplay ship. Now, I, I, I have her ringed and bought a skin, though, but overall, her performance-wise is, like, not that great. And this gun also is not that great, so negligible. So, I'm going to close these real quick. Go ahead and fix this as well. Right, on to this, wait, no, no, we have this gun right here. Right, finally, we can talk about one of my favorite guns in this game, the triple 406mm 16-inch 445mk6. Uh, the eight, the HG MK6, or triple MK, MK6, my one of my favorite guns in this game. I really want a gold version of it. 25 firepower, very low, I know. It's a, it's a tier, it's a purple gun, it's 25 firepower, I know it's very low, but it makes up for it in other places. 156 damage times three for HG. That is a lot. Like again, I told you guys, compared to the Monarch gun from earlier, which has a shelling power of 142, this one right here has a shelling power of 156. It is very, very high for a uh, HG gun, and it's purple tier as well too. It's really, really good. 200, uh, 24 uh, reload, a little bit slow, but definitely not that bad. 19 spread, one higher than what I want it to be, but again, not that bad. Coefficient is 105. That is really, really high for a purple gun. But the cap out is very low, 109, which is, that's the that's the detrimental part. And the average HG ammo typing. So this gun right here, although it's purple, it is one of the best HG guns in this game because that shelling power is really high for, for HG. 156, it is very, very high. This is... Like I told you guys earlier, 150 is where you want to be nowadays for average guns for battleships. This is 156. It is very high compared to the previous HE guns we talked about. Very, very good gun. Has a little bit slow reload, but not that bad. A little bit uh, high spread, but definitely uh, okay. 
105 coefficient. What this tells you is that you don't need, you don't need a lot of investments for this gun. You get to plus 10, you're good to go. 105% coefficient, you're done. You don't have to push for 119, 119 because that's plus 11, and purple guns cap at plus 11. So you really don't need to push this gun to uh, plus 11 unless you really want to, which means this gun has early investments and it caps out very, very early. It's a very, very good early investment gun. This is why I tell a lot of people, if you want a good battleship gun early, these are the guns to go for. So overall campaign, I give this gun a solid B. It is a solid B. Now, it's not the best gun by all means, but it's definitely a very good gun. It'll get you through most of the content in the game. If not all the content in the game, it is solid. Bossing, because there's a very lack of HE gun selection when it comes to bossing, there's there's not much competition. We'll also give this gun a B in bossing. Until there's a better HE gun out there, this gun is pretty much one gonna be gonna be one of the best guns for bossing with in this game. So that's the funny part. Farming wise, again there's better options, but since the HE and caps up very early with low investments because of the purple tier, we'll give this gun a B. I believe B is fair. Maybe B minus. We'll give it a B minus actually because it's a little bit slower on the end. But you can definitely get this gun very, very early. If it gets to plus 8, plus 10 very, very fast. And get quick investments and quick power spikes with this, this gun alone. Very, very easy. Now Operation Siren. You're pretty much not going to use HE guns for Operation Siren. Because the only HE time, only, only fight you're probably going to use HE, um, HE ammo on is like some Abyssal fights. And... Um, Arbiter's uh, Temperance. So we'll give this gun. We'll give this gun a B minus. I think a B minus is fine because there are scenarios where you do need HE, but like not that much. But even if you are doing HE content, this is still one of the best guns because for most players that aren't very inf invested into fleet building and gear as of yet, it just gets the job done. It's a very, very cheap gun. Think of it as like the Walmart of BB guns. You need something quick, you need to get, get the job done. This gun right here, baby. This gun is as average and solid as it can get. It's very, very cheap, very, very good. B's across the board is a very, very good gun. Now, I say B, like, I put B here because, oh, B is bad. No. This isn't an Asian household. B is good here. All right, guys. Now, let's go to the next gun right here. We'll be talking about the, this gun right here. So the triple four zero mm sixteen inch fifty mark d mod o prototype. This gun right here is one of the gear lab guns. A little pricey to make, but let's go ahead and review this gun. So for an AP gun, we have the following: forty five firepower, one hundred fifty four times three on shelling damage. Not bad. A little bit slow on the reload, but that's fine. Twenty four point twenty one seconds per volley. Not bad. Nineteen. On the spread, a little bit above where I want it to be, but definitely not bad at all. 105 to 124% coefficients, very good. And the ammo type is AP MKD. If you guys don't already know, when it says like different ammo typing, don't worry about it. It could be AP plus, AP7, AP, 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 Pokemon, the third evolution of Charizard or whatever. It doesn't matter. The ammo typing doesn't matter because what you care about are the mod modifiers that comes after. The 45, 130, 115. That's what matters the most right here. What this tells me is that 45 light armor, 130 medium armor, 115 on heavy armor. That's what matters the most. Again, the higher the better, the higher number, the better. <clears throat> so this gun right here, good on damage, pretty good on the volley, a little bit bad on the spread. I guess volley as well too, or spread fire rate as well too but again not the worst good coefficients and the ammo modifier is a little bit below average but definitely acceptable this is basically if you guys are lacking like pr um ap guns then definitely make this one right here this is actually like not that bad if you guys need like a solid ap guns don't make the ones i talked about earlier which is like um which one was it i think it was like this one right yeah like don't make this one right here this one's like ugh. Like this one's probably like this is way better. Coefficient is better. Da shelling damage is better. Now it does have ha it does have higher modifiers. Don't get me wrong, right? It has higher medium armor modifiers, but again, twenty one spread, nineteen spread. So overall, this gun is going to give you better bang for your buck. Now it is more difficult to make because you get it from Gear Labs. It probably costs you like circuit boards or whatever. But this gun right here is like whatever. This one, if you, get, if you guys were to pick one, use this one. Modifier better, damage better, lower on the medium armor by five, but it doesn't really matter too much because it's better than heavy armor and it has like it's just more easy to work with because spread more damage more coefficient so this gun right here is not that bad campaign wise 
We'll give this gun a C because you're not going to need AP as much until you get later into the game. Bossing wise, this gun isn't the best for bossing, but definitely isn't the worst. We'll give this gun a C plus. Farming wise, you're pretty much not going to use this gun for farming, so we'll give this gun a D. And Operation Siren, um, you're probably going to use this gun a little bit if you're just getting invested into it. However, you need to do OS to get this gun, so I say by the time you get into OS, you make this gun, you probably have some PR prints by then. It won't be the worst gun, but definitely won't be the best gun. Uh, we'll give this gun a maybe a C plus. We'll give it a C plus. So overall, this gun, if you guys need a budget AP gun, this is definitely one of the better ones to make by far. Um, it's not that bad. It gets the job done. It's a little bit better compared to the Italian gun by all means. But we are still ways to go from having it be a really, really good AP gun. And AP is a very, very, again, a competitive uh, market for ammo typing for battleships. So, unfortunately, that's where it falls short. Right, let us go again. So, the next part of the guns, we have the first rainbow gun here. How many more we have left? Oh, we have ways to go. Oh, my lord. Oh, my god. We have so many. We have so many guns here. It's going to be a long video, guys. I hope you're ready. It's going to be a very, very long video. Right. We have the triple 40mm or 406mm 16-inch 50mk7, the New Jersey gun, one the limited edition New Jersey gun. So this gun right here, it's a UR. That tells you a lot about the gun already. So this gun right here, 65 firepower, very high. 167 shelling power times three very very high 24.22 seconds uh, fire rate per volley slow but manageable 19 on the spread a little bit high but that's okay 105 to 124 coefficients very very good and the average hd typing so this right here is the eons and eons improvements of the 406 MK6. This right here we skip from purple to rainbow tier. So like I told you guys, this gun already is a really beast of a gun, right? Now, even though this gun is a beast, this one right here is an entirely different of a beast. It is 11, shell, 11 shelling power more damage, which is a lot. It has a higher coefficient potential up to 124. It is a is a little bit slower by two a point two seconds per volley, but twenty more firepower. It is a very very nasty gun. If you guys don't think the purple one's already good, this one's already really really good. So campaign wise, this gun right here, it's an easy A baby. It does a lot of damage. You can use this gun for farming with. You can push it to end game. It is a very very solid clean gun. Very 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 good. The best HE gun we have in this game by far. Bossing wise, again, limited factor in, in bossing, but because it, it does best at what it does, we'll give it an A. Farming wise, it's not the fastest gun. By all means, there's a lot faster of a guns nowadays for HE. So for farming, we'll give this gun a B minus. It still has really good damage, but it is not that fast. But it's still really, really good if you want to use just this gun alone for farming with. So we'll give it a B minus. We won't let it fall into the C category for that. In Operation Siren, there are some scenarios where you need this gun, like Arbiter Temperance, and it does best at what it does. So again, we'll give this gun an A. Um, very, very biased towards the UR gun, but hey, it is a UR gun. It's that's the reason why it's a UR gun. Has high stats, has high damage, high modifiers or high coefficients. I mean, it's a really good gun. Can't go wrong with it. It does best at what it does. Again, it is an HE gun, guys. HE. It's number one HE gun for battleships as of right now. All right, that isn't just farming. So it is best at what it does. Nothing can compete with it. It is really, really good. It has no competition because it's HE. Very, very good gun. Right. <laughs> oh man, it's gonna get draining. Oh man, there's so many uh, guns to talk about, dude. Oh my God. All right, the triple 406 uh, MMBL MK1 Royal Navy. I think this one of the earlier edition guns as well too. And actually, no, this is um, I guess the improvement of the um. No, no, this is a this is a prior upgrade compared to Monarch's gun. All right, whatever. Anyways, that was a really old gun, I assume. Uh, 45 firepower. 
154 damage times 3. Actually, not that bad. It's actually pretty high. 24 point, uh, 24.02 uh, seconds per volley. 19 spread. Average coefficient, 105 to 124. And again, ammo typing, 70, 190. So this gun right here on paper sounds pretty good on average, right? The area where it falls short is this right here, the ammo typing. This is the part that falls off. Again, it says normal right here, right? We don't care about this right here. It doesn't really, this right here is not matter. It could be SAP, SAP, normal. It doesn't matter. What you look for is this right here. So because this gun is basically a jack of all trade, but master of none, jacks of all trade in, in Azure lane is bad. Because if you want an HE gun, you get an HE gun, right? You don't need 70 ammo type or you don't need 70 modifiers for HE right there. It's useless. You use HE gun. And if you want 100 um, medium armor modifiers, just use an HE, uh, AP gun, which is like 130, 140, right? Way better there. And if you want 90 for heavy armor, there's some that have 120 or 130 for heavy armor. So it falls off short a lot. It's not a great gun because even though these stats are really like pretty good, the ammo typing is really bad. So not a big fan of this gun by all means. It has very, very low ammo typing. So by by all means, it is just across the board like a terrible gun. I, I probably give this gun like D's across the board, honestly. Like I'm trying to be bi I'm not being biased or whatever, but like this gun is just like awful. Maybe campaign probably gets some value out of it, so we'll give it like a D plus. Because like it has mixed damage kind of, but like the modifiers are just so low for this gun, it's like not even worth it. By the time you even have this gun, you're probably like in like chapter six or whatever, which is okay, but like it's just not a great gun overall because the ammo typing is just is a jack of all trade but master of none. And in this case of Azure Lane, is being a jack of all trade for gun typing is not that great. It's not. So going over here, let's knock these out. The next gun we have is the Triple 406 MLE 1938 prototype, the AP MK6, the champagne gun. Why I call this AP MK6? Because right here, guys, it shares literally the same modifiers except damage per shell as the Triple HE MK6, but it's AP bracketing, so that's the difference. All right, let's talk about this gun. 45 firepower, 150 damage times three, 24 second reload, 18 spread, very good. 110 to 130 coefficients, also very good. AP typing, or ammo typing is AP squared, or rooted, or whatever you want to call it. 40 light, 140 medium, and 120 on heavy. So this gun right here is one of the better AP guns we're ever going to get in the game. Is one of the best ones we got when the PR3 release, because... AP, we need AP guns badly, so there it is. It is very good gun, has very good spread, 18, has good damage, 150, average reload, very high coefficients, 110 to 130, that's very, very high. And the ammo typing is 140 on medium armor and 120 on heavy armor. That is very, very good. Like I showed you guys in the prior uh prior AP guns, like this one right here. These guns right here, 130, 115, coefficient of 124, this one right here. 130 coefficient, 140 modifier, and 120 on heavy armor. Remember, remember I told you guys, the higher the number right here is for specific content, the better it is. So 140, 120 on medium and heavy armor, this gun right here is very, very good. So campaign-wise, again, you probably won't use this gun as much until you get later into the game, so we'll give this gun a C+. Mainly because HC is like one of the favorite um, ammo typing here, but definitely not that bad. We'll probably give it a B, actually. I'll give it a B. Bossing. Definitely is a good gun. You if you play on Helena, it's one of the guns you use on Vanguard for timing purposes. So this gun is definitely very good. We'll give it an A. Farming, uh, farming, not the best farming gun. There are better options out there. We'll give this gun a C. Uh, yeah, C plus, C plus. <laughs> and OS definitely is a good gun. There, there are many, many medium armor targets and heavy armor targets. This gun is definitely an A when it comes to Operation Siren. So overall, this gun, very, very good. If you can get this gun, it's very, very great. Very good at what it does. End game content-wise is very, very good. Still really good in like some uh, mid-game areas. You probably won't have this game early. Um, you probably won't have this gun early game because it is PR3 research. So very limited there. However, it is 
quite accessible to players that have been playing quite some time now. So you, you'll eventually get one, especially if you've been working on PR3. So it's actually not that bad. All right, I have so many guns open right now. I apologize. I need to close all these out. Right, where are we at? There are so many. All right, this is the uh, triple 406 mm model 1940 prototype, the Marco Polo gun, the PR4 battleship gun. So, this gun right here, it is 45 firepower, 153 on damage, 23.94 seconds per volley, 20 spread, um, 105 uh, to 124 coefficients, and sap ammo typing which is 100 on HE, 150 on medium, and a 50 on heavy armor. So this is a weird gun. Some people don't like this gun. Some people like this gun. Here's the take on this gun. It's best at what it does, medium armor targets. However, this, the values on it are really kind of weird. 20 spread is very, very high. Keep that in mind. The damage is good. The reload is average, but it has high spread. But it's very good on medium armor. So this gun is pretty much meant for medium armor only. You don't want to use it on HE or light armor. You don't want to use it on heavy armor. It's a medium is a medium armor type of gun, which is for carriers, heavy cruisers, and some large cruisers in the game. So, wait, yeah, 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 I said that right. Okay, <laughs> all right. So it is a very good gun for medium armor target. Now the the reason why some people like this gun and some people uh, don't like this gun, they prefer the champagne gun a lot more, is because the spread on it is like pretty bad, and the coefficient is much lower compared to the champagne gun, but has higher medium armor uh, modifiers. So the only one who can probably get value out of this gun as of right now in current quote unquote meta is New Jersey. The reason why New Jersey is really good with this gun is because she has a skill where, if I can find it right here, somewhere in here, and I can find it. Oh my gosh, please, let me find it. Here it is. Decrease the spread range of this gun's main, uh, of this ship's main gun by five. <clears throat> this right here turns any gun that New Jersey uses to a spread of negative five. So if you're using the Marco Polo gun, it's going to be 15. If you're using the Champagne gun, it's going to be 13. That is very, very accurate. I aim for about 18. This right here is going to be 15 after New Jersey gets t uh, after New Jersey touches it. And the reason why this gun is also really good on New Jersey is if you're doing the Vanguard uh, New Jersey setup, if you give Vanguard the Champagne gun, if you give New Jersey the um, the Marco Polo gun, Vanguard does go first because Vanguard here has a skill that gives her 20% reload. New Jersey has 10% reload, if I recall correctly. Yeah, 10%. So even though this gun is faster than this gun right here, Vanguard is going to go first because of her absurd reload stat and her 20% reload buff. So this makes her go first with this gun right here, which is pretty strong. And New Jersey, when equipped with this gun, she will go second. And on medium armor targets, this is really, really good because you get it buffed by Vanguard. You get value out the 150 modifier on medium armor. It is very, very good to deal with on medium armor targets. So pretty much if you're going to make this gun, you make it for New Jersey as of right now. There may be a, f a case in the future where this gun may be used more than once. But as of right now, this gun is very, very good on New Jersey because of the of the Vanguard and New Jersey timing, and I guess Helena as well too, because you need her for there. So if you want to play uh, play with Vanguard and New Jersey, definitely having one of these guns at plus thirteen is going to be very, very good. So in terms of campaign, um, it's not the worst gun. It has like decent HG value, so we'll give this gun like a um, we'll give this gun like a B minus or something. It's not the worst. Bossing on medium armor, it's very, very good. It it's very, very good. So I give it an A on medium. So A on medium. Otherwise, on every other target, probably like a C. So so if the best way I can put this is um uh, A medium and then uh, C others. So we'll do like that. But you guys can see that, but. Oh well, I think I'm at, well, I can probably scroll down a little bit more. Something like that. <laughs> so 
is like that. Farming, definitely better guns out there, but the modifiers for 100 on on light and 150 on medium is not that bad. So we'll give this gun like a, um, a C plus, I guess. It's not the worst. And Operation Siren, again, there's a lot of medium armor targets. So we'll give it an A there. Otherwise, it's not the worst. There's definitely some light armor enemies there. So it's not that bad, actually. I give it an A. I give it an A overall. Definitely an A overall. So... Overall, this gun is very niche. It's you pretty much only use it on medium armor, and only for medium armor, uh, and only on New Jersey because she maximized the spread decrease on this gun right here. Otherwise, I say um, if you were to pick one gun, like Champagne's gun or the Marco Polo gun right here, you probably go with the Mark, uh, the Champagne gun. It's way better overall compared to this gun. It's just that this gun really excels at what it does on medium armor targets, and pretty much only on New Jersey, who has the spread lower or whatever. Um, because she's the one I wants to go after Vanguard, not before Vanguard. All right. So let me go ahead and remove all those for you guys. I have to delete this as well too. All right, this guy is gonna be a long video. Oh my god, there's like how many more guns do I gotta cover? I probably gotta cover like, oh my god, there's so many guns. I'm trying to speed things up. Um, right, the triple 410mm 10th year type prototype gun. So this is the easy mode gun, probably caught the Musashi gun by now. 45 firepower, 154 on the damage, 24.1 per uh, seconds for reload, 19 spread, 105 to 124 coefficients, and AP typing is regular AP, 45, 130, and 110. So this is as average as it can get. Again, back then when, when PR1 first came out, this is probably one of the best AP guns we get in the game as of right now. But nowadays, it's, there's this way better option. It's not that great. So it's probably not that good overall. But it is a good gun on Musashi. And if you want to play, against, uh, play with Musashi, it's a pretty decent gun there. So overall, this gun, this is taken into perspective. It is not that great of a gun. So campaign-wise, we'll give this gun like maybe a C+. Plus for AP stuff bossing this gun has seen better days it's not the greatest but definitely not the worst either farming wise definitely not a great gun for farming with we'll give it a D well probably no probably give it like a D plus and Operation Siren is like eh, it's, it's not the worst but we'll give it a C plus overall this gun is like not that great because compared to other guns like the uh the Champagne gun or the Marco Polo gun right here. These guns are way better compared to this one right here. However, again, because Musashi is a thing nowadays, these values may get bumped up a lot. For bossing now, uh, Musashi, probably an A. And Operation Siren, Musashi also makes this an A. So even though this gun isn't the greatest when it comes to other battleships, because um, Musashi needs an IJN gun to get value out of her barrage, she needs this gun. Or she needs the Yamato gun, whichever you would prefer. So it's actually an A on Musashi, but pretty whatever for everyone else. <laughs> That's the nature of this gun right here. Oh my god, it's a one hour video, boys. Who's excited? Pumped up for a one hour video. Oh my god, kind of crazy, I know. All right, let's scroll this up. The next gun, Yamato's gun, finally. Let's talk about this bad boy right here. 65 firepower, the triple 460 mm type 94. 216 damage times three, very, very high. Reload is 30.59 seconds, very high as well too. Spread of 19. Coefficients across the board, 105 to 124. And ammo typing AP, 55, 140, and 135. Very, very high heavy armor modifiers right here. So this gun right here, has been getting a lot of controversy in this community lately. It's like very slow, it hits hard, stuff like that. Personally, I don't care about any of that. I like the gun, so I'm going to keep using it. Overall, though, this gun, it, ha it has been taken, it's been, it's not that bad on performance. Uh, people are going to say like, oh, I disagree with chemo, but they can disagree with whatever they want. I don't care. This gun is not that bad. So I did a review on this already, so I won't talk too much into it. I'll give my thorough analysis of it right here when it comes to the, the the four categories for campaign it is definitely not the best campaign gun because it's very, very slow in its AP. When it comes to campaign, you kind of want to have HE and you want to have a decent sp a speed of a gun. So having a 30 speed gun is not that great, especially when you're clearing mobs or whatever. 
216 damage is more is overkill when it comes to mobbing, so you really don't need it for campaign, so we ignore that. For bossing, it's actually not that bad. Despite what people say, I'm, I'm giving it an A. It's a very hard-hitting gun. It's very, very good, especially on Musashi. It is, by all means, not a terrible gun. It's very, very solid, very, very clean. Farming-wise, it is definitely not a good farming gun. We automatically give it a D. It's not great farming gun. It's very slow. It's AP. Yeah, it's not a great farming gun. Operation Siren, again, you hit hard. You, you nuke stuff out. Good gun there. We're giving it an A. So, overall, this gun, love it on Musashi. Um, as of right now, no one can really use this gun properly, except maybe a couple preload ships and ships that have like a very fast reload, like Ulrich von Houten and Champagne. They can get some value out of it. But overall, this gun right here is not that bad, despite what people say. It's a very strong gun, the strongest AP gun in this game as of right now. 216 damage per shell. It's crazy. It's a very, very powerful, powerful gun. So, very good at what it does. Bossing, destroying things in one burst. It is not a bad gun. Very, very good at what it does, which is end game content. But it's a terrible farming gun, though, a campaign gun. <laughs> I'll say that much. Whew, we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. How many more guns left? Like six more. All right, let's knock these all out. Right, the Twin 380 SKC 34, the Iron Blood Gun. So this right here is the uh, the fast AP Iron Blood Gun, 45 firepower, 132 damage per shell, 18.4 seconds reload. 16 spread, very low by the way. Um, 110 to 130 coefficients and ammo typing is just regular AP. So this gun right here, it's not like the worst, but it's in a weird spot because you there aren't many scenarios where you want a fast AP gun. There isn't because AP is generally meant for bossing and you kind of just want heavy hitting guns with average speed for when it comes to bossing content. So AP... You don't want a fast gun because when, when, you, when you have a fast gun, most of the time, aside from the 457, which I'll talk about later on, don't do a lot of damage. Having a speed of 18 is great, kind of, if you don't want to sync with Helena, but that shell damage is just so low for an AP gun. AP gun, you just want to have a good hitting gun that's pretty decent on speed. So by default, this gun sounds good because it's fast, right? It has decent coefficients and damage for what it does. But AP is just the wrong ammo typing there. You don't want fast AP guns for most time because if you're farming, HE is better. If you're bossing, slow AP, not slower AP, not slow AP, but like medium speed AP with decent damage is better. So campaign wise, C. Um, <laughs> oh god, type CX. Bossing, probably a D. Um, farming, maybe C. Operation Siren, definitely D. So not a big fan of this gun. Because if it was HD, it'd be a lot better. But when it's AP and it's a fast gun, it's like, yeah, I'm not a big fan of this gun. Truth be told, it's not that great. All right, let's knock these out, boys. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Right, the Twin uh, 381 MM BL 15 inch MK2, the hood gun, is what people called it because it helped. It helps hood proc barrage a lot more back in the day. So, again, 45 firepower, 133 times 2, 17.96 seconds. One of the fastest guns in the game. 16 spread, 110, 130 coefficients, and the regular 140, 110, and 90 um, ammo typing for HD. So, this gun right here is basically the identical of this gun, right? It's very, very similar across the board, about the same speed, about the same damage, coefficient, everything, right? Sounds good. It sounds bad, right? However, it rolled the right ammo typing, which is HE. And when it comes to these kind of fast guns with this kind of like low damage output, it's the better farming gun. So unfortunately, it rolled AP for this gun right here. But the HE, if you roll HE, HE means farming. Most farming targets are very vulnerable to high explosive. It's the better gun there. So campaign wise, this gun is actually not that bad. We'll give it a B minus. Not the heaviest hitting gun, but it's definitely not a bad gun by all means. Bossing wise, it does fall off a lot. It's a very, very low damaging gun, so we'll give it a D. 
it is a very very terrible gun for when it comes to bossing farming this gun is as a one as I can get it's a very very clean gun right there now I think I gave the Odin gun an A as well too so keep this an A I was gonna give it an A plus but I forgot the Odin gun I gave it an A so we'll keep it an A as well too it is a very good gun there all right and operation siren there are better guns out there by all means it is not that great there we'll go ahead and give it a d so this gun right here campaign farming one of the best guns out there alongside with the odin gun which is way better and an upgrade compared to this gun right here this gun right here is not that bad i hope i gave the same i hope i gave the same like um statistics as the um Odin's gun. I could be off, but I, I if I did, I apologize. But Odin's gun is way better than this gun right here. So if I gave this too high of a bump, I apologize. I got I gotta fix that. But this gun is definitely better than this gun though. So if that happens, I apologize, guys. My mistake. I'm just gonna go ahead and close all these in shame real quick. If I did mess up, hopefully I didn't though. Hopefully I give like roughly around the same score, maybe a little bit more, but hopefully around the same score. Okay, going down the list, going down the list. We're almost done, guys. Four guns left. Right. So this upgrades in this. This is like okay. We got, and then we have this gun right here. This is an AP gun right here. Four of uh, the bootleg 457s, the 45 firepower, 166 damage per shell, 18.95 reload, very fast. 15 spread, very low. Uh, 110 to 130 coefficients. AP4 ammo typing. Again, this really doesn't matter. We're looking at the coefficients right here or the modifiers which is 40 light, 140 medium, and 115 on heavy armor. So this right here is the budget version of this gun, which we'll talk about later on in the video. But this is actually not a bad gun. It's very fast. It has decent damage. Gets the job done. If you want like a fa if you want a ship to go fast that needs this gun, uh, like Duke of York or something, there's definitely a good option to have on Duke of York. It's probably one of the better guns to use, honestly. Uh, overall for bossing though it's like not the best best i believe it has a buff at debuff and buff as well too which is right here uh when equipped by a ship increases her main gun damage by 10 percent but increases her reload time by 35 percent after the fifth shot and onward so pretty much meant for bossing because most bo bossing content nowadays is about 90 to 80 or 80 to 90 seconds so by all means you can definitely get off five shots or less within that time frame so this debuff is actually not that big of a deal the only time this uh, this gun is actually that bad is on fast ships like Champagne and Ulrich von Hutten. That can get out probably one volley every like nine seconds or something. That's the bad part. So this is actually not that bad of a gun on most ships. It's actually really, really good. Definitely a good budget gun if you're missing a 457. So if you guys want to invest into a quick plus 10 gun, there's actually a really, really good gun here for just general bossing content. Very, very good on Duke of York, by the way. Highly recommend it using on Duke of York. On Vanguard, though, you probably want to use a slower gun because she has a very fast reload. But on Duke of York, though, who has like very lackluster reload stat and um, uh, reload as a like one of her skills, this is a very good gun here. So campaign-wise, probably we'll give it a B. It's actually a really good gun there. Bossing-wise, uh, let's give it a B as well too. Farming, probably not one of the best guns out there. We'll give it like a C, maybe C minus, but I'll give it a C for now. And Operator Siren, solid. We'll give it a B. This gun is actually really good. It's a budget 457. I like it across the board. Can't go wrong with it. The only bad part about this gun is that get from Gear Lab, so you're probably gonna make, you have to spend a lot of mats to make it. So keep that in mind. Otherwise, though, if you can't make this gun and you're lacking a 457, having one or two of these is actually not that bad of an investment. Definitely worth doing. All right, the Twin 406 SKC 34 prototype, the FDG gun, the PR2 FDG gun. 45 firepower, 154 times 2, 19.42 per second volley, 16 spread, very low. Coefficients 110 to 130, and the average HE ammo typing. So this is actually the jack of all trade gun, but for HE right here. It has sizable damage, has very fast uh, vo reload volley, has really uh, good accuracy with the 16 spread, has pretty good go efficiency and average HE typing. Personally, I'm like indifferent about this gun. I think it's like a good HE gun, but I don't think it's like one of the best, best ones out there. I personally like the 406 MK6 a lot more uh, when it comes to HE guns because it just gives out more raw damage compared to the twin uh, 406 because it has not only does it have more damage when it comes to the shelling right here, but it has one extra shell. Keep that in mind. This, shell, this gun fires two, two shells not three so you, lo you lose that on damage there 
but it's a fast gun. So if you're looking for a mixed gun between like speed and uh, damage, then this gun is for you. This this is probably like one of the best campaign guns by all means because it gives you a mixture of speed and damage. So it makes it very, very versatile for campaign content. So campaign, we're giving this gun an A. I know it sounds weird, but we're giving this gun an A because it has a good mix of speed and it has a good size, sizable amount of damage when it comes to HD content. So that's actually really good. Bossing wise, I'm not a big fan of this gun by all means. I think it's like kind of lackluster when it comes to bossing content. We'll give it a C plus, honestly. Farming wise, again, it's very, very good mixed gun. We'll give this gun a B, probably a B plus, but I'll probably give it a B for now. It's not, not that bad. In Operation Siren, there's not that much content. You do need mixed damage every now and then, but I don't think it's like the worst gun out there. So I give this gun like probably like a C plus or B minus. We'll give it a, we'll give this like a, I give it a C plus. I give it a C plus. I think there's better options out there. So this gun is a really good mixture of speed and damage when it comes to HG. I like it, but in a sense that when it comes to HG content, if I'm not doing farming, which is a speed gun, and I'm not doing a bossing content, which is a, just high power damage, I don't like mixture of guns. Again, I'm not the kind of person who enjoys a jack of all trade gun because if I'm farming, I want speed, and if I want bossing, I want damage. So. I'm not a big. I'm not a big fan of mixtures of both, but I believe these kind of guns that are jack of all trades are very good for campaign because it has multiple scenarios where you need like speed, damage, and everything, right? So it's a very good campaign gun, but for like other content, again, like kind of lackluster. But I'm like, this could definitely be better, but like it's not the worst though. It's definitely not the worst gun out there by by far. All right, the meme gun, the confetti gun right here. This is one of the earliest gold guns in the game as of right now. 25 firepower, 25 anti-air, 22 times 20 pellets, 19 volley, 12 spread. Sounds very low, but it's a meme or whatever. Um, the volley is 2 times 10. The coefficient is 110 to 130. And, and we're typing is San Shikidan, which is 140, 110, and 90. So you think this gun is like kind of whatever but this right here is it fires 20 times so it's like very inaccurate it's pretty, it basically just hits everything um it doesn't do that much damage at all it's like ba maybe paper weights right here but this is a math or whatever when it comes to hd content if you hit every pellet it's actually not that bad but in order to hit every content the size of the hitbox of the target has to be like very very massive so overall as a meme gun i don't think it's that great um yeah, truth be told, I don't think it's like that great. You probably get some value out of this in like low level worlds, but by then you probably be like way past that, so it's like not a great gun. So memes aside, I give D's across the board because this gun is like kind of whatever. Maybe a little bit higher on the uh, campaign, but definitely this gun is like it, it's not the best. It, it, it is definitely this not that great. Memes aside, like people use this gun to farm with for MVP on vanguards because this gun is awful. It's awful, awful, awful. It's I don't know if they're ever going to fix that, honestly, but if they do, that's great. All right, and the last gun on here is a one-hour video. Oh, my gosh. The Twin 457 MM Mark A prototype, the Georgia gun, PR2. 65 firepower, 207 times 2 on damage shells, 20.65 seconds per volley. Very, very fast. 17 seconds or 17 spread. 105 to 124 coefficients, AP plus, which is 100, uh, which is 55, 144, 145, and 125 modifiers. So this gun right here has been reigning in this game for a very, very long time. It is one of the best guns in this game as of right now. Very, very good. Now, uh, after the recent updates with like Vanguard and stuff like that. Um, People don't use this gun as much if you're running Helena autos nowadays because it just it just doesn't line up with Helena. It's a very anti Helena friendly gun because it's very very fast, but it's a very very good gun though. So if you, if people don't play with Helena, this gun by all means is probably the best gun in the game as of right now. If you don't play around Helena, this gun is the best game by far. It's very good speed, has good damage. It's just a very very good gun. It's my personal favorite to this very day. So that being said. Let's get into the scoring. So campaign is a fast gun. It's not bad at all. I give this gun. It's, I'm very biased towards this gun. I'll give it a B plus. Bossing, definitely an A. Farming, you kind of want to have uh, faster guns for HG. So we'll give this gun like a B. 
an operation siren, definitely an A gun for sure. It's a very, very good gun. So for people not playing with Helena, this gun is actually really, really good because it does a lot of damage. It's fast. It's very good speed. It's just overall a really good clean gun. Now, if you are playing with Helena, though, it's probably not one of your favorite guns because the doesn't the timing doesn't work with Helena at all on auto. So you gotta use slower guns like Marco Polo gun or the Champagne gun. So those are better options, or even the Easy One gun at, at times. Just not this gun right here because Helena is just Helena is that Helena is this right. So it's not it's not a good gun there. However. Again, if Helena's not an equation, it's good for pretty much everything. It has good speed, good damage, overall, just a very good jack of all trade AP gun. It does its job, it's very good at it. Very, very good gun. It's very hard to access this gun because it is from PR2, which requires you to have 50 um, prints of this gun. Not to mention, it has a splash radius of 16 as well, too, which means the impact of the shells is six, it's just 16 compared to 15 from most shells, means. It has a better AOE, so if you do miss this uh, gun shell, it has a bigger AOE, which means it can still probably hit the target because it has a big splash radius. So this gun right here is really, really good at what it does. It really is. So I like this gun a lot. Personally, one of my favorite guns this very day. Does its job very well. Super clean gun. Super clean gun. All right, so that answers all the gold uh, guns and some good purple ones and the rainbow guns in the game. I uh, answered all of them as of right now. I'll go ahead and probably throw up like a chart or something that you guys can look at and put it in my descriptions of all too as, as to what I think the best guns are for are for certain scenarios. Keep in mind, this is my biased opinion. Um, I'm very biased when it comes to picking out guns because I'm end game. I see things differently, but I try to make sure that whenever I make content for people, I try to cover for all bases. So it is like kind of fair. So if I if I don't do that, I apologize. But I try to give like my best ratings as possible when it comes to these kind of guns. Overall, most guns in this game aren't bad by all means. It just comes down to some are better than others because of accuracy, more damage, or just fits the scenario way better. Like hence Helena guns or Helena guns, right? Stuff like that. So again, these are the guns I believe are to be the best ones, the ones that I find to be okay, and the ones I find to be like absolute monkeys. So not a big fan of those. If I don't see your, if you don't see your gun out there, either it can be upgraded to another form, like the triple or like the twin four zero six right here. It can be upgraded to the other one right here, uh, or it's just too niche, like the gang gut gun, which is like somewhere over here, I believe, like this one right here. I just don't think um, those guns are that relevant, or it's too niche to point for me to care about it. So I completely ignore those kind of guns. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I spent one hour talking about this and probably more editing in this video. It's going to be great. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll be doing more of these in the future. Hope you guys enjoy them. It's my first ever making, uh, first time making these kind of videos. It's a very long one, so I apologize for that. And yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully I answered all your questions. Any concerns, leave them in below. And I'll see you guys next video. Thank you guys for watching.